<laughs> hey everyone, welcome to Think Woodworks. My name is Izzy Swan, and today I want to talk to you guys about something that's really exciting. Production work. And that's one of those things that, you know, you can either love it or hate it, but if you're in the trade, and you do this for a living, and even if you don't, if you're one of those guys that does the craft shows and the fairs, you end up doing some production work, because you have an item that sells well, and you're going to build a lot of them. Well, in my case, I want to talk about jigging. <laughs> Go figure, we're going to talk about jigs today. Um, and how you can use one jig to do multiple functions, or in my case, I'm using one jig to make, to do all the rough milling on my toes here. This is a pallet pal. Uh, I make these for taking pallets apart. And if you look in the video, in the description box below of this video, you'll see several videos where I show taking pallets apart with the pallet pal. My kids ripping pallets apart with this thing. My little seven-year-old girl makes real short work of a, of a pallet with one of these. And I also have a video where I show how to build a pallet pal like this one right here. This one's out of plywood and the plans are meant for two by four stock material. And if you're gonna build one and you, you buy the plans, it's best to use straight grain treated material or straight or white. If you're going to use white wood, use you know dense hard um, excuse me heartwood. But uh, in the video, I show you how you can use those plants to build the same thing out of plywood, which makes for a really good durable uh, pallet pal. And I'll I'll put a link below for those video descriptions. I'll also include a link for my plants. But I got contacted by a company who wanted a whole bunch of these things. And, you know, I really wanted to keep within the realm of the materials that I'm used to. And this is red oak. This is reclaimed oak. So it's kind of cool. You can use reclaimed material to reclaim more material. <laughs> but, um, again, not the purpose of today's video. I want to show you how I make a lot of these, and I make these toe kicks here on one jig. And I make them quickly because I have to. Um, you know, I get occasionally I get called out for doing consulting work for companies who are furniture companies or um, cabinet companies who have heard heard about me or who know uh, know me from past work that I've done. I owned a furniture company for many years, built, building and designing rustic furniture. And when I do that consulting, typically they want to know ways to improve their speed, get things done faster, and obviously they want to do it safely. And one of the first things I tell them, and I know there's going to be like 100 guys right now that want to punch me in the nose for saying this, is I tell them to make the guys wear tool bags. <laughs> uh, in my shop, when we went to the, the tool bag, uh, mandatory tool bag wearing, uh, my production increased 20% inside of a month. Nobody was looking for tape measures. Nobody was looking for pencils. Nobody was looking for squares. And... They could keep a lot of those tools that you use constantly in their tool bag. Um, and I know there's a lot of guys out there right now cussing at me for this, but it really makes a huge difference. One of the things I did with my, with my guys is at the end of the week, if I didn't catch anybody that week without wearing their tool bags, everybody got an extra 20 bucks to their paycheck. But if I caught one of the guys without their tool bag on, nobody got it. So they were pretty good about keeping themselves in check. And it really made a big difference on my bottom line at the end of the month. So that's, you know, one little quick tip, you know, and I, I'm sorry for anybody out there who's <laughs> cussing me out right now. But let's talk about doing a jig to perform multiple functions. And let me show you what I've got set up right here. Boom. This little fella right here is meant, is designed to do... One purpose and one purpose only, it's to make these. These are the toes for the pry bar. And the way it works is real simple. Let me move you over here where it's a little bit more pleasant view. That's better. I mill all my oak into 36 inch lengths. Um, and you know, the, the dimensions that I, that I require are the same on everything, which makes it really easy. So I mill everything at 36 inch lengths into these dimensions. And then I mill the, the foot um, the foot lever and the toes out of the one piece and then the handles out of another. What I do is I have this set up so this cuts an exact length. This is exactly the length I need for my toes. And then I transfer it here, clamp it down, and that cuts that sharp angle on the toe right here so you can get in between the pallet. And then after that's done, 
I, it goes here so I can chop off that 45 degree angle just like that. And that turns this into a very, very short process. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut one of these so you guys can see how quickly I can mill out just one, one of those, um, uh, those toes. So just like that, I've got it, one of the toes, the pry toes milled out. From there, I would take it over to the drill press, and I would drill out my countersink, and I would drill the, um, the, hole, the through hole all in one fail swoop. I draw out the countersink, and then next to it, I'll have another drill press. So I don't, I'm not handling this more than one, you know, more than twice. By the next time I do this, it's uh, all mounted on the, 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 the bottom pry device, and then everything gets routed and sanded, and it's done. Um, really, when you're doing production work, you want to handle the material as little as possible. And with jigs like this, where you're setting up to do production work, if you can make that jig do all the mill work, or at least a good portion of the mill work, it makes a huge difference in production, a difference in production time. So, not a real exciting video today, but it definitely one that will be helpful if you start, if you're in that production environment, or, or if you get to that point where you're going to be doing a lot of one particular thing. Set yourself up where you're handling the material as little as possible, and when you do have to handle it, accomplish as much as you can each time you handle that material. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Much more fun stuff coming and crazy tips, and we'll talk to you all soon.